This is the um, January 22nd meeting of the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Conway. We're also going to have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30 tonight. We are being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public uh, later on. Okay, first item on the agenda, we have the minutes of the January 14th meeting. Bob, you know the changes? Uh, yep, yeah, they were great. Any, uh, any changes no. or additions? No. Okay, I also reviewed them. Thank you again, Lisa, great job. Did, did Lisa do these or did yeah. you do these? No, no, no. I did those. You, you did, did these? I guess I did those. Well, well Tom. Tom. You oh, right, because be you weren't there. Taking a page right. out of Lisa's book. Yeah, okay. very nice. taught me well. <laughs> Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the January 14th meeting by second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $120,202, a payroll warrant for $105,477, and a payroll production warrant of $26,499. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept those warrants. So I have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Robert? So I did have a few meetings this week. Uh, uh, we met with the Capital Improvement Planning Board, Conway's Capital Improvement Planning Board uh, with Dana. and. Uh, and we mostly we looked over all of the capital requests, and then um, we'll be meeting with uh, with with Ron and everyone who asked for money this week. To, uh, uh, so uh, that went well. Um, we had an FCAT annual meeting on Thursday, uh, and I got elected as president once again for FCAT. So it's going to be another year and. Well, but basically, things are going fine for FCAT with just this sort of Damocles hanging over our heads over what's going to happen with the FCC budget that mm -hmm. nobody, nobody knows how that's going to work out. Yeah. And, yeah. But there's nothing we can do about it other than a lot of people wrote letters. Ed Markey wrote a nice, powerful letter mm -hmm. representing the Senate, hoping they hold off and don't do something quite so destructive to national community access television that has nothing to do with us it's for the whole fcc right, right and then i went to the mma annual meeting with you and tom uh and heard heard a good speech by elizabeth warren and a good speech by ed markey so. thank you bob it was great um, yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't make the FCAT meeting because I was uh, in Boston um, for the MMA. On, I went in early on Thursday, um, and, and I thought it was a very good uh, conference this year, good conference and trade show. Um, I thought uh, the, uh, the Saturday and Friday night dinners were good. It was a good, good time to get together with... Uh, with other selectmen and counselors, town administrators, and uh, very informative. And I, th I thought the selection of uh, learning labs and workshops uh, was excellent this year. The learning lab down in the vendor area. Yes, they were good. Now, there was that. Was that new? I don't remember that, that before. That is new so, this year. The, um, the, the, uh, the staff put on more events this year in terms of learning and education than they have in the past and uh, I think it was very well received and the staff worked very hard on it and uh, it went, went very well. Uh, and that, uh, the MMA for, I was there for three days so that was, that yeah. was my, uh, uh, my meetings this, this past week. Okay. Public comments. I do not see any members of the public here, so I guess we don't have any public comments. Under old business, we have FERCOG direct local technical assistance priorities. Okay. All right, we have submissions by um, the planning board and our town administrator. Uh, I also have submissions, but I don't have them with me. Um, 
Bob, you have some as well? Uh, I haven't looked it over that much, no. Okay. I saw I got the one from Tom, and I, I looked at the other one. Uh, well, this is the I meeting. Uh, the, uh, right. I know we have to do it today. <laughs> so. <laughs> and we're supposed to submit them by the end of the week. Yes. So, um, and so we could actually do it a, a, a couple of different ways. Um, if you wanted to enumerate your priorities um, over the next couple of days and send them in, I could compile them and weight them and... Um, this, and this has to be by Friday. Correct. Well, that's what they're requesting. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'd like to give you give you my priorities. I'll I'll give them to you um, tomorrow. Um, so then I'll 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 if that's the case I'll have to sort of weight all of the submissions equally. Yes. And and you know if there's two people who were for the same one then mm -hmm. that gets a higher ranking. That's right. That'd be fine. Now. I started doing this a while ago. All I have to do is right, right. just find it. We had it for last week, and I looked them over last week. But uh. okay. and, and there are many, many priorities, and I'm sure that, uh, that Joe and you touched on uh, many of the ones that I had in mind. And yeah, they ask for the top three to five. Yeah, that's, Again, that's, that's, a, that's tough to well, do. Well, it, it, it's, I'm, yeah, I'm sources. sorry. It's top three to five planning projects and top three to five regional projects. Right. So you do actually get... Um, yeah, you get six choices. Yeah. yeah. And then there's uh, community compact things as well. Right. So, okay. Um, All right. So you'll, you'll, have, uh, you'll have mine uh, tomorrow. Uh, Bob, you want to submit some tomorrow, too? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you can wait them and... and uh, mm -hmm. Give them to the fur cog by Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, next item is new business agreement with Teague and Bond, um, not the tie and bond. Tie and bond. Tie and bond. To review the next AM proposal for a solar installation. All right, so essentially um, the, the planning board uh, requested this. Uh, RFQ request for quote from Ty and Bond uh, for an engineering peer review of the Conway Solar Next Amp LLC project on 2394 Lane Poland Road here in Conway. Uh, yeah, that's a, uh, a peer review of the Next Amp proposal, and uh, I will. Uh, yeah, and uh, <coughs> Ty and Bond is actually going to pay for it. So, uh, no, next I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, next, next AMP is going to pay for Ty and right. Bond's work, so this does not involve any town money. This is just a way to make sure that what next AMP is proposing to the town has been uh, technically reviewed. Right, right, okay. Well, you know, the, the, the major... Uh, uh, the major factor here is connection and uh, Eversource turning it on. You know, everything yeah. else, everything else sort of pales uh, compared to, to those things. So uh, Ty and Bond's going to give us a technical um, review, uh, engineering peer review of the project. Uh, any questions, Bob? There's only one thing here where it talked about the number of meetings that Ty and Bond would have, and they they would charge 600 bucks or something for each additional meeting, and I was wondering who pays for that. It's all paid for by Nexamp. Yeah, it would yes. be. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, I I know that the 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 bid that's in here is paid by Nexamp, but I wasn't sure about these additional costs that are kind of a little more open ended than I yeah it's, that, that it's, I was wondering about. It's fairly unlikely that the meetings will be controversial enough to generate the need for additional, additional meetings. meetings. Yeah, I, I I agree. I agree. Two they're they're talking about uh, two meetings. Yeah, and then um, they say five hundred and sixty dollars for a per meeting fee for additional meetings. Right, and so that. That'll be between them and Nexamp. 
Yes. I assume yeah. so. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I don't see any enclosures with this. Um, again, this is going to be paid for by uh, Nexian and the planning board um, has reviewed this with um, tie-in bond. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, any, any other questions? No. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, sign the authorization for a request for a quote for an engineering peer review for the Conway Solar Nexamp LLC uh, project at 2394 Main Poland Road in Conway. This does contain the quote, doesn't it? Is that what this is for? Yes, quote? yes. Um, I think it's actually a request for qualifications. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it's uh, $7,500. Right, yeah. Yeah. $7,100. Uh, 7, what they say in the bottom. Okay. Yeah, $7,100. Yeah. Uh, with estimated reimbursements allowance for uh, mileage. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, sign uh, this request for. Uh, is it quote or qualification? Uh, request for qualification. Is it qualification? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, for engineering peer review. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. My understanding. I wasn't following it. Okay. Too closely. Yeah, we, we've we've done we've done this before. Yeah. It could be a quote because they didn't give you a number. Yeah. But they also said what they were going to do and that they were qualified to do it. So. Right. Design. Okay. Uh, we have a six thirty meeting with um, the finance committee, but since the finance committee hasn't arrived yet. Let's go on with uh, other items in the agenda. Um, do we have items not anticipated 48 hours in advance, Tom? I do not. Okay. Um, do you want to give us your update now? Um, sure. Your update is separate than what you're going to present? Yeah. With your budget. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> uh, there's been a lot of uh, committee work being done. This winter, there's uh, a lot of busy people out there, uh, starting with uh, uh, Julie Petty and the Conway Youth Sports Team are close to a final draft of a manual for Conway Youth Sports, containing all the policies and procedures they have developed, basing many of them on Deerfield and adapting them to Conway. This is under preliminary review by Parks and Rec and should be completed soon. With this, Conway Youth Sports will be fully converted to a functioning program that is part of the town of Conway, in very good financial shape, and compliant with Massachusetts state law. Uh, importantly, Conway Youth Sports can now reasonably be run by <coughs> volunteers as a town committee. Uh, unfortunately, Julie's term as administrator and soccer director will end in June, but she's leaving it in excellent shape with not only the policies and procedures, but the web interface and financial payments and reporting all in top shape. Currently, Conway Youth Sports is looking for a baseball director, a soccer director, and an administrator. Mm. Uh, the Courage Committee met and is considering a number of options. These include asking for the cold storage barn to be built first, perhaps with money already available in the garage stabilization fund. If the town does a substantial amount of the work, we can save some labor costs, though we would incur the costs of two bidding processes and contractor mobilizations. Andrea Woods of the FERCOG checked with the Attorney General, who said that with two bidding processes, this would not constitute bid splitting, also, as the types of structures to be built are different. Mm -hmm. They can be considered two separate projects <coughs> uh, if we make sure that we treat them as two separate projects. Okay. Uh, they will be meeting again in two weeks instead of next month as these new options need to be explored thoroughly and we want to be ready in time to present something to town meeting. Okay. 
the personnel committee met and discussed proposing a bylaw revision and succession planning uh, document. Um, that it's, they're not proposing a document, but they're working on the document. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they will also reach out to the uh, school committee, again, about personnel matters, uh, proposing a meeting on a Tuesday or Thursday in late March. Uh, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee, which we heard about earlier, is meeting tomorrow night with the chair of the Board of Health, the fire chief, and the highway superintendent to go over um, the seven capital requests that we have. Um, just a brief reminder on that from the budget discussion uh, in earlier weeks that um, I am proposing taking only a couple of those uh, requests from capital stabilization. Uh, the the uh, new truck for 200000 and the fire equipment. Uh, in departmental news, I'm progressing on the Regional Human Resources Grant. It may be that the Frontier Regional School District has not availed itself of the Community Compact Program, which would make it technically ineligible to be part of the study, though I'd still plan to ask for its inclusion. Even a study on just the four towns would be worthwhile, though as Frontier could still join in a regional municipal agreement mm -hmm. with the necessary work extrapolated from the study. Sure. So I think it would still be worth doing it. Absolutely. Um, all four of the towns have joined in the community compact at some level, not with HR, but with other things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that makes us all eligible to be part of this grant. Okay. Uh, and finally, the fire department responded to a wood stove fire last night at about 3 o'clock in the morning. So many thanks to our volunteers who braved the cold and wind to put out the fire. Absolutely, yes. That's, that's an extraordinary <clears throat> effort on Absolutely. their part, and uh, I'm sure everyone in town appreciates their readiness to do that kind of work. So this is a reminder to clean your chimneys. Yeah. Yeah. We, we already we already voted on these. We yeah, yeah. You can just, that's just for you to sign. It should have been in your okay. red folder. Sorry. Thank, thank you, Tom. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Um, oh, and uh, just a note for Joe. We just signed the uh, time bond. What all? So, should, anything we should have known? <laughs> Joe, we, we trusted you implicitly and, and therefore didn't need you to be present. Oh, but good. since you're here, do you have any comments on the, on the no, time? time no, on? As you know, it's a peer engineering review. Sure. I'm sure yeah. Tom explained that. So. And, and as an engineer, you're, you know. You we'll know be getting a check from the applicant probably tomorrow okay. to cover that cost. It'll go in a 53G account and then we'll spend it. Uh, all I need is a copy of the signed document. Okay. Well, we'll let, let's let us make a copy of it and then give one to you. Okay. I can pick it up in the morning. Unless you want to go make a copy of it now and leave one for us. I can do that. How about I make a copy and I'll leave it on your desk? All right, that's fine. Actually, if you leave it on in my mailbox, it won't get mixed up with the, okay. the hundreds of other pieces of paper. And Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much for your <laughs> contribution here tonight. <laughs> You're getting what you needed. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks very much. Very, okay, very Joe. concise. Thanks. You so Solar grounds. Oh. Okay, do we have any select board comments? No comments. Okay. Mail. I didn't see any new mail in the folder. Mm. Okay, so we don't have that. Uh, we don't have any announcements. Um, the only thing we're waiting for is the remainder of the finance committee to get here um, for our joint meeting. Tom, are you expecting um, the rest of your committee? I suppose. Okay, okay. Um, okay, is there anything we need to go over between now and 6.30? Uh, no, I can, um, without getting into the particular budgets that are on the, uh, on the agenda, I, I can make a couple of comments. One of them is that uh, I just got some additional information about the Board of Health uh, budget 
it, it results in another $127 in their uh, Franklin Regional Solid Waste Management District uh, line item. So it, it's, it's not much, but I have new budget sheets for that. Um, and I have a new uh, spreadsheet, my, my uh, sort of master spreadsheet here. Um, I have, let me pass those out to you and I'll, I'll put these out for the, for the finance committee as well. Um, this one I had, I printed on the color printer so you can see the, the assumptions and the budget right. numbers that are, that are not, not in yet. Uh, of course, none of the school numbers are in. Right. And I've just assumed a 5% increase. Last year it was a 5.78% increase. Um, I really have no idea what it's going to be this year, but this, this gives us, you know, it's probably a middle. It could be a little less, could be a little more. So that gives us an idea. And, and with the newest numbers and a 5% increase, I, I uh, estimated a 4% increase before, that makes the percentage rise in the budget uh, a 3.95% rise, which is right. um, almost a full percent less than it was last year at 4. Point, I think it was 4.85 right. last uh, last year. So that's that's you know a substantial improvement. Obviously, the the town side of the budget, um, uh, you know, out of out of uh, almost two and a half million dollars is only going up forty thousand. Right. Uh, right. The school with a three and a half million dollar budget is going up one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Right. So uh, all in all, those are those are not unreasonable figures. Um, it's always nice to have the target of just going up <coughs> two point five percent. You know, because that would be uh, the most conservative budget impossible, uh, but I think that, that with that as a target, it's um, it's good if we can keep it under three percent. But again, uh, given the numbers, it'll depend entirely on the school budget uh, whether we can keep it under four percent or not. So those are the uh, and and uh, there is one thing <laughs> uh, push it up over 4% right there. I have not included in this the um, uh, the item that was in principle agreed to last time, which was to uh, fund the the town audit on an annual basis um, right. Right. so that we can, so that the, the budget level itself is, is, is more level over time. So this does not include, that would be $12,000 um, conservatively. That would include not only the town budget every other year, but every three years, the school has a single audit, right. and that cost last time about twenty five hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. So. So it was a total of fifteen with that, and what thirteen without it? Oh uh, no, it was more than that. Uh, we we actually uh, our auditors uh, finally updated our our price, and uh, it was actually over twenty thousand dollars total um, last time. So if we aim for 24, um, that gives us a sufficient amount to keep in place so that if they raise the price again, we won't have to, we can still keep the budget level. Right. Okay. And that goes into a fund that we can, that is just maintained over time. That one doesn't close out at the end of the year. It won't help us with free cash, but uh, if we if we have a, a certain buffer in it, then we won't have to raise it for some time either. Right. Okay. That's fine. So I'll uh, I'll distribute this to the uh, committee now as well. So our total taxes have gone up two hundred thirty-one thousand out of about six million. That's yeah, that's, that's the that's, 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 that's the estimate right now. Yeah.
Uh, also in financial news, we just got our equalized values uh, how much today. Did, how much did it go and, up? And I didn't go in to get the figure, but I will bet that Lee um, did, except that I, I know she was with her family today, so maybe she didn't, but she'll be in later today to um, talk about her budget anyway. Uh, Yeah, I think I'd need my uh, computer to actually get that figure. It wasn't going to be particularly meaningful to me without these input. So, right, right. <laughs> um, so if you assume a 5% rise time, what does that mean the taxes would go up? Well, we need to know the equalized value before we know that, because it's the amount of the budget. It's it's the amount of the the equalized value divided by the budget. That's going to work. Yeah. Whichever way that goes to the defines what the tax rate is. Plus new growth, etc. So there's a few few changes there. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome all. Hey, come on up and, uh, and join the uh, sit at the table here. We've got a few minutes, just a couple minutes before 6.30. No, Jan, Jan, you've got, you've got the hot seat over here, Jan. The hot seat. The witness chair. Thank you. 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 Alan, are you expecting and other members? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, then I'm sure I'll have any idea they're expecting. Then we will, we will wait. Uh, we're still a little early. By three minutes. So a few minutes. You don't have PhD. You have PhD in ten years. Wait fifteen minutes. For the time. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Cameras are rolling. I just see it. Yeah. How are you, Jan? Very good. How are you? Just wonderful. On the chill side, but still. Uh, well, it's balmy out there now. It's it's. Um, let's see. What is it out there now? It's about uh, sixteen degrees. Yeah, good. Compared to what it was uh, yesterday at this time. About 30 degrees difference with the wind chill. But it was sunny all day, so it felt good. Oh, Jim, one thing that uh, we just discussed um, was uh, the idea to put in uh, half the cost of the audit every year if we're going to stick with the biannual audit. So if it, the budget is more level year to year um, rather than having it go up to whatever it has to and then back down to nothing the next year. Uh, so that'll be a, an ongoing special article that we just add money to or take it out as we need. That makes sense. All right, so um, are you going to go first? Uh, when we, uh, you want to go first? Um, why, don't, why don't we have Jan go first since okay. she's here, and then yeah. I can fill in uh, depending on who else is here. Okay, I'm, good. I'm so what is the plan? Do you want me to just well, sort of go we, we, we still have another minute before the official start oh. of our joint meeting with finance. Oh. And it would be nice for them to have a quorum before we start. Well, well uh, we're going to start at 6.30. Yeah. Okay. Whether it's yeah. a quorum or not. Yeah. I know Alan and Tom are anxious to get this yeah. going. Gentlemen, it is 6.30, time for our joint meeting. Uh, if other members of the Finance Committee come in, we can they can just join us in, in okay. the meeting. Okay. Is that, is, that, is, that, is that okay with you? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to start with the, um, the Treasurer Collector um, budget. Jan, do you want to give us a rundown on that? 
Sure. It's um, a very small increase this year. As requested, we held the salary line item uh, level until we find out what the select board will vote for any increases. Um, the mileage remained the same. Postage went up slightly. That's due to a um, postage increase. Mm -hmm. Our dues and meetings level, office supplies level, um, software support went up just a little bit. Uh, we, I added in a small amount uh, because we're going through a tax collector conversion this year, uh, software conversion, and um, just for anything unforeseen that we might need there, any additional support. So I added in a uh, thousand okay. something. Um, so it's pretty pretty close to level funded. Mm -hmm. for okay. Treasure collector. Basically, an increase of twelve hundred dollars over seventy four thousand. That's that's yep. certainly reasonable. Uh, Alan or Tom, do you have any questions? Well, that was a good question. Yeah. Okay. So the, uh, moving on, the other, uh, another item I supply numbers for are the employee benefits. And yeah. the first line yeah. item on that is the Franklin County Retirement Assessment, and that's given to us by Franklin County Retirement, so right. it's gone up. It's their um, calculation of our Yeah, sorry, we don't have that. We don't get that one. Oh, all right. Cool. Yeah, that, that's totally beyond our control. That, that Beyond our yeah. control. Yeah. Does anyone need any copies, by the way, or do you uh, have? Yeah, the employee benefits would be good if you have that. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. uh, I brought five copies. Okay, that's right. Sure. That's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. How do you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, we sure. can. We, we can split one. You need one for yourself, right? I have. Yeah. Oh, you have it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. And I make one more. Well, if, if another finance committee member comes That's in, right. you can show that. Thank you. All right. So, um, like if you turn in, we're, we're on page three now on the employee benefits section. Right. Um, so, as we said, Franklin County Retirement is beyond our control. Uh, Unemployment insurance, um, what I try and do, I mean, it's, it's pretty close to the same number as last year. I, I estimate uh, what our earnings are going to be for the whole year and um, try and figure out our percentage. So this year we're at 1.1%. So I added an additional percent for the second half of the year just in case we go up, if we have any layoffs that we have to cover or whatnot, okay. we have the money. And so on the years that it's blank, there just was no cost at all, like in 2016 um, or 17. Tom, maybe you can speak to that. These sheets are su supplied to me by the office, so I don't really know why the expended is yeah. zero, yeah, or in blank. But yeah. Sorry, which, which item? For under for under expended. Oh, oh, those, yeah. Um, I think we didn't have... Um, it was difficult to split them out based on the information that I had. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, uh, and I should have an, a total expended for FY16. I'll, I'll, I'll look for that. But it, yeah, it had to do with some of the accounting difficulties that we had. Right. It, yeah, the, the, the big increase from 17 to 18 was that, that health, health insurance bump. You see that from 17 to 18. Yeah. So if you want to talk about health insurance, what I do every year for health insurance is I take um, a snapshot of December and what we have for enrollees right now for school mm -hmm. and town mm -hmm. and multiply that out by 12. And then I add an additional family plan and additional individual plan. So right, right behind that worksheet mm -hmm. is where you'll see that. Mm -hmm. So it's 15,728 for a family plan, 5,479 for an individual plan. Mm -hmm. And then there's a Deerfield line item. Those are uh, employees that we share with the district. We're assessed a portion of their benefits. So okay. um, based on what we have right now, again, it's an estimate mm -hmm. for a total of 435,701. Uh, so that's my figure there. 
Um, have, have, have we gotten a, what's the increase? Um, well, um, so this is not trust. the current rate. We don't have the, the oh, increase we, yet. So this is based on a 3% increase. Oh, okay. I won't know until the end of January what our increase is oh. going to be. So this number is likely going to change. Okay. All right. So this is based on 3%. 3%. Okay. I, I heard somebody say 5%. Okay. Yeah, it's a moving um, target. Yeah. Um, I actually think uh, if everything goes as it was going in the fall, uh, when I went there for our fall meeting, we had some excess. So I right. was, I was right. feeling at that point that we were going to maybe put off the plan changes. And, but again, I, we'll see what comes up at the end of January to mm -hmm. see. Okay. I, I don't know if you're aware, but we're... Um, our group insurance is negotiating some plan changes because they're losing their reserves over the last several years. Their reserves have been dropping, so they're concerned. So they're talking about increasing some co-pays, and um, we were going to change last year, but the, the towns just weren't quite ready. Everyone didn't have all their ducks in a row for the negotiations portion of it, so they put it off another year. And over this last year, uh, we started, we, we, we found some significant savings in pharmacy especially. Mm -hmm. So yeah. oh. and there was a question on whether we we're going to go through those changes or not. But what we figured if we didn't make the changes, then we were going to have significant premium increases. So uh, we were trying to keep the premium increases at bay. Mm -hmm. You say, wait, is that through the Hampshire Council of Governments? Is that the well, no, it's the Hampshire Insurance Trust. Oh, Hampshire Insurance Trust. Yeah. They're, they're under the umbrella of, of the HCOG, okay. but they're actually run separately. Oh, all right. And, and uh, yeah, they, they run, they, they're administered separately. Right. Yeah. So at the end of the month, I'll have much more information for you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want to meet again and discuss that or if I just update the figures. Yeah. Okay. So life insurance, I pretty much do the same thing. I take a December snapshot, add on an additional two plans, and um, so we haven't had too many increases in our life insurance expenses. Medicare payments are, again, an estimate of what the annual payroll is going to be. So um, I don't remember if we were up to that. Okay. Oh, we're, it looks like we're slightly down. Uh, I can't really explain that other than just that the estimates of payroll, they kind of wave. Sure. Okay. Mm. Good. Um, we have an item in there for MTA mitigation for health care plan changes. So this item is if, if we, as the group insurance trust decides to make the plan changes, there um, are some savings that we have to pay out to our employees. They have to be able to share in the savings that the town will uh, make. So uh, we, I had estimates from Tom for last year at around 8081 8, So we rounded up to put in $10,000 for that uh, in case we need to pay. Yeah, base, basically we're, we're level funded on, on the total insurance package, total uh, employee benefit package. Uh, questions for Jan? Well, the curiosity of the uh, health insurance, how much is negotiated? How much is, most of it is negotiated by the Hampshire Insurance Trust, but also we're required to provide by you know, collective bargaining, right? A lot of the models are teachers, right? The health insurance expense. Is there any guesstimate um, how much is for the kind so of we're, school? We're, we're required to compare ourselves uh, against the benchmark, which is right now the GIC, the state, <coughs> state plan. So mm -hmm. annually we compare ourselves against them. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, when these plan changes started to come about, uh, Tom and I started looking for other um, insurances that mm -hmm. might be better. So we're still looking at that, and we're waiting to see how this plays out yeah. with, with the trust. So far, it's been a really good plan to have. There's no deductibles, which is unusual yeah. in today's yeah. health insurance yeah. world. 
So the uh, short answer is no, it's not negotiated. We have a plan, and if we change it, that's, that's when this mitigation money comes in. Oh, okay. um, but we have to change it to something that would get us savings. Okay. And because we've had such a good plan uh, that was run incredibly well for a long time, yeah. we haven't seen any plan that can touch it. Um, we currently offer benefits that virtually no other plan in the Commonwealth offers. Uh, for their no pay, no co-pays um, for... There's co-pays. Uh, oh, oh, there's, there's no there, deductibles. There, 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 oh, you're right. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can talk about the specifics better than I can, but there, there are... Um, there, there are there are things that we have that um, no one else has been able to offer, yeah. and they they are looking to change those and and to raise the amounts that employees would contribute uh, because uh, they feel that they're not on a sustainable path, and this led last year to a proposal to change some of those deductibles, okay. and. Uh, it was it was dropped. There, there was an option to take some more out of their reserves. They have very healthy reserves, and uh, the unions thought that they should bring some more out of their reserves before going to a plan change, uh, especially as the plan change uh, would have had some effect on on uh, some of the union members. So they opted, you know, not to go along with that, partly because some of the towns also didn't have their process, um, they, they, they didn't do their process properly. Uh, so they were actually opening themselves to lawsuits if, 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 uh, if they continued. So the, the Group Insurance Trust is going to have to work more closely with its members in making sure that their process is good before they move forward with another proposal. Now, uh, do you think at the meeting in the end of January there is likely to be a proposal for a, a change in plan? It's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But this is in the, the last fall, year we'll I have I felt there would not be, but we don't have no. the final um, information yet. Yeah. So the claims information through the you know calendar year should should all be in, mm -hmm. which will make a difference in how how things play out. The, the group insurance, the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust has been drawing its reserves down. Mm -hmm. uh, it had done a good enough level and, and it, it had done well enough so that its reserves had grown more than they needed to be. So they, they spent four years at least with, with zero percent rises in, uh, in their premiums, which was you know great for the members, but it, that, that can't always continue. So. The, the idea is where, where do you start uh, curving back into something where you're good, actually going to have to be a little bit more realistic in, in, yeah. in what you're charging. And they had thought that they had that, you know, that they had a good proposal for, for doing that and they wanted to start it last year, but again, some of the towns weren't ready yeah. and uh, some of the unions thought they had too much in their reserve. They argued that. They said that the unions were misreading the situation. but. Uh, the upshot was that they did not offer any plan changes last year. Okay. If they do decide to offer plan changes, it is a complex and tedious and, and very hard deadline-oriented process for input. And the, the, um, the key there is that the town can actually change things, it, and it, it just has to allow for input right. uh, from the unions. and. Yeah, it might be open to a challenge, but if their if their data is good, and and again, early communication of the numbers that they're using would have helped, I think, in uh, in uh, calming some of the worries that were going on. So at some point, we will get a a change in um, the deductibles that are being offered, but uh, right now it's still the best plan in the Commonwealth and. From all I've heard, and um, uh, they have managed to contain increases uh, very, very well. And so, when you said earlier, um, you know, to stem the downward of the reserves, but you said that they saved a bunch of dough on the pharmaceuticals. Yes. How'd that happen? So uh, the. Is it in a, in a, you know, 
the last year, all you hear about in the news is the pharmaceuticals <laughs> gouging right. the Right. The pharmaceuticals are the big problem. I'm just curious how did happen. Um, uh, the administrator got together with Blue Cross and they came up with some savings and, and mm -hmm. discounts that they should be eligible for and they were able to, to capture that. So mm -hmm. more discounts there. Mm -hmm. So would that be going forward? Yes. Yeah. So in terms of the negotiating, con the teacher contract negotiations that are currently ongoing, I mean, there could be some change to these numbers depending on what's negotiated, right? And we'll find out really until the end sometime in March. The, right? the problem is, is that the, the group insurance trust is responsible for negotiating with Blue Cross uh -huh. and, and getting to that number. So all of their members, um, do you know how many there are, Tom? Maybe 40? Uh, something like that. A number of members in their, their towns, their uh, school districts, their water districts. Mm -hmm. They get together and they vote, and they decide if they're going to make that plan change or not for the trust. Mm -hmm. So once the trust makes that vote, that's, it. that's what it is. It's right. determined. So now it's up to the towns to negotiate with their unions and accept that change. If they can't do that and the unions say, no, we're not going to accept this, then the town has to go out and find another plan. And unfortunately, there's, there's no other plans that offer the same benefits. So they might be able to go out and find another plan that has the same premium, but the benefits might not be the same. Or they might find a plan that has the benefits, but the premium much, yeah, might be much different. higher. So it's really um, the town and, and the unions have to negotiate these changes with, with everyone in mind. Any other questions for Jan? Well, there's a, there's, a, uh, there's a possibility that this figure could change depending on how negotiations go. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's it. Yeah, so um, my, my next page, if we're done with that, is um, I also provide the debt service schedule. So this year I've been asked to put in a figure for Frontier Capital Improvement Bond of 31737. And then we also have our fire truck note for 32,691. And we have a small figure in there for short term interest, and that's in case we need to uh, borrow anything short term, mm -hmm. such as uh, something for a bridge repair. We have uh, our financial advisor fees there. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a little pad to include any um, incurred fees, like a, a bank fee or, mm -hmm. or some, some other small charge that the treasurer May. Great. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Okay. Okay. All right. We don't have anybody else here, so Tom, you want to take the picture? Sure. Let me, uh, I will distribute my notes. Um, I will. Thank you, Tom. Uh, first, I'll just quickly mention uh, I also supply the IT and legal budgets. And I haven't handed anything out on them because the IT budget is absolutely level funded. Um, there, there is no change in that. And uh, for the legal budget, I've just, it, we brought it up to 12,000 from 10, but it looks as though that was too much. I'd like to bring it down a little bit to 11. Um, so saving a little bit of money there, but still allowing us the flexibility in case it becomes necessary. So that's actually coming down a thousand. Uh, not too much of a change, but but that's nice. So anyway, I didn't think it was necessary to print out all that paper just to say that. Uh, the the more important item here is the uh, the uh, town administrator budget, which includes the budget for the town office in terms of office supplies, telephone, uh, all that sort of thing. It includes um, everything that uh, 
uh, Lisa, my assistant, does as well. Um, it does not at this point include the assistant to boards and committees, the new position. Uh, that this year is within those committees and commissions themselves. I think we'll get a better idea of what the actual cost is because they have um, much more of a hands-on understanding of what they need from her. But it could be that next year we would like we, we should add that uh, item into this budget. This is just a question of whether it's in the boards and, and committees she's actually working with or as she reports to me whether it would be in my budget. And it makes a certain amount of sense for it to be in my budget because I am um, her supervisor mm -hmm. okay. on the staff side. So that said, um, well, there's the, uh, the note. Um, on, I, I am the sole person under the salary line. Uh, my contract has me going up uh, $3,000 for FY20. So that's reflected in the budget. Um, I am also proposing to bring uh, my assistant up to $20 an hour from $18 an hour and would remind everyone that I lost my last assistant to the Franklin Regional Council of Governments who was paying a competitive $22 an hour for a similar position. So uh, even the $20 an hour is not really competitive. How many uh, hours do you figure? I'm sorry? How many hours do you figure? Um, well, <laughs> I also support her request for a promotion to uh, 20 hours a week from 19 and a half. So currently it's 19 and a half. Um, based on additional human resource and budget responsibilities that I've asked her to take on. So I've actually asked her to take on additional responsibilities and um, uh, for that she's, she's asking to be uh, promoted to 20 hours a week which, which would allow her uh, benefits. Um, uh, though um, uh, I don't believe that it would involve any extra cost at this time. Um, we could revisit that situation in the future, um, and uh, if it moves forward, I would create the new position that includes the extra benefits uh, as an assistant two with the position assistant one remaining at 19 and a half. So when we rehired some years down the line, uh, we could rehire at the earlier rate if we thought that was um, the way we wanted to go. Um, on mileage and postage, um, both of those are going up based on current year spending. Um, I'm now on the uh, Mass Municipal Association Board of Directors and uh, go into Boston occasionally and also go, I'm on that because I'm also on the uh, Massachusetts Municipal Management Association Executive Committee, so I go to their meetings as well. I'm going to more meetings. Yes. So it's still not so going to pay. Conway is well represented. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. It's, uh, we're, we're taking over the board. I, I think so. Yeah. It's still not going to pay all my mileage costs, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big help to me. Um, postage, uh, the rates are going up next year. Next week. Um, for dues and conferences, uh, I've actually brought that down, you'll notice, and that's because even though I'm doing more, uh, I will have taken my procurement classes. Uh, the final two are coming up in uh, February. Those cost uh, just under $1,800. Uh, but I haven't reduced it by $1,800. I've reduced it by about uh, $1,330 because I do have extra meetings to go to. So even though um, I have more meetings to go to, the line item is going down. It's just not going down as much as it would if it was uh, completely level funded. Uh, and that was why it went up in the, first, uh, yeah. the last couple of years. Well, it, yeah. well and it went up mean, because, uh, last year because I had these procurement classes yeah. right. to right. take, and, and that, that was $1,800, so um, we don't need that anymore. Uh, 
Then I've included $5,000 for a new copier. Uh, I suppose I should have put in 4,999 because the 5,000 triggers the capital uh, oh, yeah. capital project review. But uh, I put it in kind of as a as a general figure. Uh, I don't know exactly what will be available at that time, uh, but the quotes that I got now, uh, there was one for $4,500 that would be reasonable. The current copier is is. Uh, getting tired, <laughs> and it's always been a little bit problematic, this particular one. I think we need something that's slightly heavier duty, and so I asked for for uh, the uh, yeah. models that would be heavier duty and got a range, and the 4500 is kind of the mid-range of those. Uh, so I've included that in here. Now the, the, uh, the 700 that's been in the budget has been for the maintenance agreement. Uh, and the maintenance agreement would be included in the initial figure for the first year. So uh, next year you would again see something like $700 under that line item. So that, that's the majority of the increase is, is for that one uh, item plus my uh, contractual salary rise. Uh, the town report is up based on last year's expense. Uh, we've always been behind in town report expenses. I won't have this year's actual expenses until next year's budget has already been finalized. And I try not to be too um, too aggressive in funding. And what we've always been is a little bit behind. So uh, um, I'm hoping that 5250 is pretty close to what it will cost, but but we don't we won't really know. Uh, office supplies, um, I've raised that 500. The accountant asked for an, act, an additional 250, and I had 250 in for the, uh, the town academy that I'm planning for the fall as well. For professional technical services, I've reduced that. Um, we no longer pay for any IT or building maintenance work out of that. We've had some water quality under that, but that's now under building maintenance. I still pay for pre-employment physicals from this account um, and would like to retain some funds for any urgent work requiring professional or technical help. Um, it's not going to pay for much, but at least there's a line item that we can move things into if we need to. So uh, that is a summary of what How I How many physicals proposed. can you do for 250 bucks? Uh, we can do a lot. They're uh, 75 a piece or oh. something like that. Mm -hmm. right. If any luck, we won't need that many. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> so I'm, I've been bringing that down, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. over time because we've been moving things into other line items. You're going to have a separate line item for the Citizens Academy, that idea, or is that all uh, No, I put it down. I just put it down under office supplies because what it is is it's binders and copying and, and things like that. So okay. there's nothing. I, I didn't. Um, I suppose if I had. And I don't know, I'll have to check with the accountant if we can have any refreshments based on that or not, but I can always sprint for a gallon of cider if I need to. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so just the major increase is the copier situation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a 9% increase or so. Mm. Most of it's the copier. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's the copier and, and my salary are the two yeah. major contributors to that. Questions for Tom? No. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda here, we have the Board of Health. Oh! Laura and Jimmy. How are you doing tonight? Good. And before you say anything, let me point out that I received a letter. We received letters from the Franklin Regional Solid Waste Management District oh, yeah, today. Which included an updated cost, which raised your budget $127. That's all. That's just extraordinary. Wow. And that is now reflected. You guys waste that much in, in the day. <laughs> it should be hard to find. So we should throw out the old one. Uh, that is that is reflected in this in this current budget, yeah. which I've done just because I figured you wouldn't want to uh, ignore them. Okay. 
So the uh, that's a very low. That's a very low increase. Wow. Sorry. For the Franklin Solid Waste Management District, their increase that increase isn't much. Uh, not much from the estimate that uh, the Board of Health had come up with, which was is a testimony to their good estimating skills. <laughs> We've been tracking this stuff since <laughs> we could we can anticipate what's going on. Yeah. Okay. All right. So essentially, it's it's a level funded budget from yeah. what I can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 How are we doing on our recycling? Everything's going along okay? Well, I mean, that's why we've in introduced this fee for, for residents, so we can get stickers on all the residents' cars, which is not 100%. We you have know, some pushback here and there, but at least this way we can identify a non-resident coming in and dumping trash. Why do we let non-residents come in and dump well, they, trash? They st they'll sneak in. I mean, it, all we had was that little yellow sticker on yeah. Yeah. on the side of your car, so now there, there's something solid. Well, now it's a red sticker on the, on the yeah, front. Exactly, yeah. and people can see it. And we, there's a number of, there's a number of issues involved with the recycling that we think we're getting in excess of trash from outside of the town. Okay. So, so that's why we're trying to, our, our first move here is to, is to try to channel it down to get only residents into the transfer station. You know, that's number one. Number two, pays you throw. Okay, so so we're we're monitoring that more carefully yeah. now. Okay. But, but then with the stickers, is you will have to buy a new one every year. Right. And what was happening before is you sell your car, your stickers on your car. Oh. <laughs> somebody else can come into Conway and oh. come to the transfer station. You. Um, They were also not all affixed, so people could trade them around. And well, well don't, don't we know through the excise tax when a car has been sold? Don't we what? Through the excise tax yeah, with our We get um, nothing. We get uh, no information that takes on a long time for that vehicles yeah. being, oh, okay. being sold. Yeah. The right. other thing is somebody can move out of town and still come back yeah. with their sticker. Right. And I think that's the biggest problem yeah. we we did catch several of them. Good work. Okay. I, and I, no, I don't have the exact figures whether, right now we're showing that our uh, compactable trash is 55% of what we get rid of at the transfer station. It should be lower. Um, but that is lower than it has been at, in other years at this time. So that's fit to represent compared to including recycle or uh, compactable trash is the stuff that you put in the trash. Right, right, right. That's fifty five percent in comparison to everything that's recyclable. Okay, okay. yeah, that's the okay. cans, the paper, yeah, the, yeah. the metal, the books, the estimates of what goes off the uh, trade in table or goes out of the coffee mall. So we we try to track all that. Okay. And in 2009, which is our, our best year, we actually had 271.39 tons in recyclables. This past year, in 2018, we've had 252.49, so that's you know almost a 20, 20 ton differential. Mm -hmm. uh, that we're, we're 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 moving less recyclables out compared to I mean our trash our trash stays pretty even I mean it varies by ten tons here and there but the recyclables the amount of recyclables we're throwing out is, is going way down is is that because there's less glass hard we we, we can't pinpoint it down that, that close how about other towns is that the same Did well, other we are one of two towns in the Franklin County Solid Waste Management. I think we may be the only one now. Well, Roe Ro is, and Irving has their own, Irving has their own operation, so they don't kind of count. But Roe and us are the only ones that are still doing free trash. Uh huh. That means instead of just bags. Right. We just, right. Pays you sell the bags. In other words, anything you put in the trash container is an orange bag. 
Town of Conway, I we pay two dollars and fifty cents. That's what everybody else around here is doing. So their their recycled numbers are are monstrous. They're, they're much better than ours. We used to be in two thousand nine. We were like the top town in right, in, right. in this whole area. So. Okay, so so do you figure because the way we're doing it, there are more recyclings going to the trash? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And if we had a per bag fee, then people would be taking those recyclables out of the trash and putting it in the recyclables. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. That's our that's our next plan. That's our next alternative. The 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 administration of that would would probably be a, a nightmare. Uh, an absolute nightmare. Yeah. yeah. You got to sell the bags. You got to you got to account for all this. You got to administer yeah. this whole program. We need somebody just to administer the whole yeah. bag thing. So it, it might not even be worth it. It, uh, it. it wouldn't be worth it from a from a cost benefit analysis, but it would be worth it in terms of our our recycling in the you know Franklin County solid waste, the stuff that goes to the Merck. That would that would increase. So I think that it, it would be a it would be a slight gain for us financially, but I think that the bag project would be a, almost a break even. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you think people are going to ask about this at town meeting? Oh, yeah. uh, I, I think so. I was expecting more of a question last year, which didn't happen. So. Well, we didn't get that close. Everybody's pretty excised with this this ten dollar fee. Yeah. That we're paying, and now yeah. people are starting to pay attention to, to what's going on. Well, hopefully, this this will have a, a, a good, you know, a, a good result. So by, you know, the May June time frame, we may be looking real good, and we won't have to do it because if we do paper throw, it's going to happen in like August, in July, August time. When I talk with other selectmen in other towns about what they charge, mm -hmm. Conway is a real deal. It's a deal. Yeah, it's, it's a real so, deal. So, it's, it is. I, I mean, I think if you distributed something in town meeting that showed just, you know, what some of the other towns in Franklin County are charging, mm -hmm. people would appreciate it. Well, I, I think what we, we do we, more. We, we would do that. We could do that. It, it can be worth it to do a town-wide mailing as well. Uh, though some people ignore things that come from the town. Yes. I think uh, um, it, there are enough people in town who don't go to town meeting that it would be worth uh, that. It only costs uh, 150 or... Could we put a stuffer in the tax bill? Yeah, and it's free if we put it in the tax bill. Yeah, exactly. But, but that's, a, that's a smaller uh, chunk yeah, of information. It's like a third of Paper. Oh, okay. But you could direct people to the website as well now that people have internet. And uh, <laughs> so, so you can, if you can drive people to the town website, that's always a good thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we're working on it. I do remember when Conway was number one for recycling. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and there is a statewide uh, uh, recognition that this is a problem. Um, Matter of fact, I just put something in the in the Board of Health mailbox from uh, that I, I brought back from the Mass Municipal Association mm -hmm. conference. On a, there's there's there there's a statewide conference in March. There's you probably know about that. There's uh, there there is attention. There are incentives at the state level now for manufacturers to use recycled products. Mm -hmm. um, so far, there's no incentive for people to make the the raw material from the the MRF and and things right. like that. So there's there's another link in the in the chain that that uh, that needs to be filled uh, somehow. Um, but it, it, it there is state and national attention to the problem now that the the Chinese project is uh, uh, single screen yeah seriousness yeah. yeah single screen and we, we we decided years ago to go double stream and we are so glad we did. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, any other comments that you have, Carl? No. no. Okay. Any questions for Carl? No. No. Uh, questions for Carl? No. Great. All right. Great. Looks looks great, Carl. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. 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 you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The paper throw, right? <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, Jenny. Okay, thank you. Just in time.
It's extraordinary, the timing there. Oh, yes. Is it one specimen? Okay, mine's changed a little, of course. Well, let me see how many I was able to get out of the printer before it jammed. I think we're good. Lee, did you get the uh, EQV today? No. It came out. Did it? Yeah. How are we? Uh, I didn't. I didn't see it. I was, yeah, I was we usually run around 98 percent, which is where I like to be. Yeah. Hey Russ, how are we doing? Good. Okay. Okay. You can have two to the guys. One and send these up on. Okay, this is our slightly revised one from what you were given originally. Well, I like the large, large print. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. So I'll look at yours. Oh, did you get two that are done? Oh, it's Great. Big friends and everything. Mm-hmm. I was working on it in the evening, so by then I needed larger font. <laughs> Oh. Okay, Lee, what are the big changes in your budget? Well, the changes from what I we had previously submitted are listed under assessor software support, about 10 lines down, and you'll see this is a note off to the far right oh, beyond right. the graph. Yeah. And that the new figure is much less than what I had yeah. anticipated. Oh because the conversion is not ready to be implemented yet. The state will pay for the first year, so our going in costs are pushed off a little while longer. Okay. So that brings that figure down to $780 for the year, which we like a lot. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and let's see. The other thing I did, Tom was in thinking, Tom, Tom had suggested, and I think that the, the idea is, is very, very good, but I'm not too sure how to implement, to bring someone in to train as my replacement as the administrative assessor at some point, because at some point I will retire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're facing a, a bit of a jolt this year when Jenny retires. Right. from her job because of the institutional knowledge that goes with her and and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that type of thing. It isn't always easy to get someone who's fully trained. But my concern is that we have no way of making that person stay after we've trained them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as much as I would love to have someone who is dedicated enough and hope that it would work that way, I'm not sure. Um, have you thought more about that? Well, one, one is never sure about yeah. uh, staff staying or leaving. Right. And the more people who know things, the better. Oh, yes, that's true. Um, because they might be able or, or willing to pitch in, even mm -hmm. if they, even if they uh, were yeah. no longer able to do the job um, completely. Yeah. We, we have no backup for some of our most important Right. staff positions. Yes. And so I've tried to to bring some into my own operation. Mm -hmm. I've tried to, um, you know, support uh, very much um, Jan mm -hmm. and her assistant treasurer collector. They're a good team. Uh, I tried to, you know, provide a, a position for for uh, the town clerk's office mm -hmm. that would that would be able to come in and, and at least be able to know the basics of of right. where things were and, and how to yeah. how to start learning about the job. Uh, and this is a, a continuation of, of, of your own work where uh, we need someone who is who is capable of doing the mm -hmm. higher level work. And I'm I'm absolutely in favor of that. Laura, our clerk, does not want more hours, does not want more responsibility. She's responsible for manning the office, for dealing with everyday phone calls. 
uh, information requests, data requests, the butters lists, um, talking, dealing with appraisers, uh, answering owners' questions, sure. receiving, opening the mail, and then directing it where it needs to go, all that type of thing, and that's exactly what she likes and where she wants to stay. Okay. And so this would involve looking for a new person. So down on the lower part of the sheet, you'll see two boxes. Mm -hmm. In the first one, we've allowed for an administrative assessor trainee, six hours a week, 26 weeks a year, in other words, every other week, mm -hmm. for six hours a week, uh, starting at $15. And we've added time to my time to train them, about right. four hours a week. Right. And so that brings us up to that figure Without that trainee, it would be the figure in the lower box. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, that, that's reasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Although I did the four hours times the 15. Um, I certainly would be prepared right. next year to work with a trainee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my question is why 26 weeks? Simply because. It will be pretty intense for the six hours that they're there. It will be pretty solid. And I'm thinking every other week for me is about all I can manage, too, out of other things. Ah, so, so that's, that's, I'm sorry, I missed that, but that's how it's structured is every other week. Yes, every other week. For the trainee, yes. But we don't know who that person is yet. No, oh no. No, this hasn't got beyond this stage. Yeah. If it's funded, then we'll continue further. If it's put off a year, then, you know, we won't have taken any uh, irreparable steps. Uh, and I noticed your, um, your tuition meetings um, no, uh, went up slightly. Would that be enough for this person to attend the Assessors 101 uh, training? No, but that is available online now. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. The required course is available online. Yeah, that, uh, I think it's worth uh, emphasizing that it is a required course for yes. assessors uh, who want to work with the Commonwealth. <laughs> yes, they, anyone can well, just wing it. An, an administrative yeah. trainee should have it, certainly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, gosh, when you took it, you had to go to Natick every week <sighs> for 10 weeks. So having it online is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Everything else we've kept right around the same. Mm -hmm. Postage had to go up. Yeah. We had run out of the thousand dollars worth of stamps we bought a couple of years ago. <coughs> sure. Yeah. And we have several uh, large mailings a year. Um, and the cost of postage is rising as well, it's slated to rise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. These two boxes at the bottom. These are two different alternatives. These two at the bottom of the page. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They are two, yeah. two different alternatives. Yeah. So Lee. Yeah. The, you know the four extra hours a week for the to help to train in. Yep. But that would be. That would be every other week. Yeah, you know, I'm just averaging out at the time. Fifty-two. Yeah. yeah. And the box that says fifty-two, but it'd be twenty-six. Oh uh, yes, I'm kind of just lumping it in with mine. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm doing. Two. Yeah. Okay, so basically the only real change in the budget is for that, that administrative assistant training uh, and your extra hours. For the, yeah. yes, for the assessor's budget, yes. Yeah. But everything else has remained the same. Okay. Yes, now about a third of the way down the page, you see separate accounts and funding sources right here. Okay. Right. Yeah. Those are our revaluation budget, which we contribute to every year and then spend in bulk when the revaluation comes up mm -hmm. so that it's all prepaid. We have a, a, the budget for that pre-provided rather than hitting the town with huge bill every so many years. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to put another 5000 into that. Mm -hmm. And we have a separate warrant also for the CAMA the valuation program conversion costs. Right which are the costs to the town of bringing in a new program for valuing properties, for calculating the taxable values on our structures, mm -hmm. this type of thing, which we do have to change. We've been in the program for a year or so. 
now and because the state sponsored the program that they are no longer sponsoring they're helping us out a lot they're paying the company out in new york to do all of the conversion work to bring their product closer to what we've had mm -hmm. and they're also paying going to pay for our first year so that's which is good to be zero that is no we do need to have some money there and mike coachella the accountant and I had been coming up with very different figures and I went through the whole thing yesterday and it turns out that his were closer than what we had in the office. Some of my hours, for example, had been put over to regular time and not to conversion. And so we are down below the $500 mark with funds available right now. And I believe one of the things to note is that we spent $6,000 on that project this year in going out and doing all the photos of every structure in town, as you know. Yes. Normally, that entire project would be done over a period of six years. Mm -hmm. You know, and the $1,000 a year or whatever mm -hmm. would be just folded right into our regular budget. Mm -hmm. It had to be spent all at once. So the, it took the bite out of the conversion budget. So. The conversion budget will not have anything any remotely near that high again, but I would like to request three thousand dollars for that. Okay, that's going to be a separate warrant article. Yes. Okay. Now, um, was there a possibility that would be paid for out of the overlay? Yes. Account. So yes. We're, we're not talking. Yeah. That's not talking raise and appropriate. Right. In fact, we had initially yeah, talked about it, even putting transfer. five thousand there. It's going to be this is out of their own. Yes, budget, it's going to be so. it's going to be okay. transferred out of overlay mm -hmm. reserve, mm -hmm. overlay surplus. Yeah, yeah. Tom and I had originally talked about five thousand there, but okay. yeah. yeah. So that's that's. And good. both of those, in fact, that and the property revaluation five thousand, those are both intended to come out of overlay. Not out of free cash, not mm -hmm. out of raise and appropriate. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Both both those are we can cover those. Yeah. So are you going to need more conversion money for this year? In this year's budget? Is there is there more that you need to do? In this fiscal year. Yeah. Because we have the finance uh, committee here who is empowered yeah, to take true. money out of the uh, reserve funds in case he still hasn't done the pictures out of my In case you're gonna run into trouble. You can't go on it right now. No, but could I, I can bring the subject up? Yeah, good. <laughs> good. Um, yes. Um, probably a thousand or so. <clears throat> you have 600 in it, so. I don't know how much, how many more pictures we got. We still got a bunch, bunch yeah, more of those. Yeah, we do. can, and some can be put off. And then the question um, would be, when would you need it? Because it's easier to do late, but I believe you have plenty still in the reserve account for this year. Okay. Mm. We had a thousand more. We could. That would cover us for the remainder of fiscal nineteen, and then three thousand moving forward. So that thousand would have to come out of the reserve account. Yes. There's a request there. All right. When, so a thousand out of reserve, and the three thousand comes out of the mm -hmm. surplus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the, and the thousand would be for this fiscal year. Yes, for right. 19. Right. right. Well, We've not gone over for, budget yet. For uh, for what? For fiscal 19. No, I mean for what purpose? Oh, for the for, for the any remaining time of mine, they will be calling us out for training and so forth, oh. but largely to finish the finishing the photographs of we missed about 11 houses and um, some vacant land. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so your time on this also comes out of that account? We try to, yes. Is that one of the problems you had with the accountant? 
A little bit, yes. Okay. That some that were supposed to converge, who would be in conversion, were put in regular budget, mm -hmm. and vice versa. And some items. Um, for example, we bought postage. We, you know, we had to buy some other types of items, and they were. I double checked back on the sheets we sent in. The payers schedule sheets, and it looked okay. But at any rate, I can talk that over with him. This fiscal year isn't ended yet. We can get them switched around. Mm -hmm. okay. And that may have been a, an accounts payable issue rather than the accountants. Per, per well, and I think some of it was in-house because that's one of our clerk's job is to report those in the running balance mm -hmm. of our budgets. And there were several that I found that had been in uh, regular budget and not put into conversion. Okay. So it's, a, it's yeah. So I'm glad to find them now, but um, I was a bit overwhelmed last when I was looking at the figure at the bottom line. <laughs> I thought we had considerably more available. Mm -hmm. okay. Any uh, other questions for Lee? No, it's been a good investment. GIS software has been a good investment for the town. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, people are using it. Yes. It's great. Yeah. Um, That's a lot. I, Carl wants to go ahead and build a Board of Health layer, which oh. will give them a good record. Anything he already has in his database, where are the wells, where are the tanks, where are the leach fields? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and especially here in the village. Oh, That's yeah. so important. Trying to yeah. keep a, a new well 100 feet away from something else, you know, oh, that yeah. it, oh gosh, mm -hmm. getting trickier all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and we're starting up our staff site, our secure staff site, probably within the month. Oh. And if you go online to our website, you'll see that the owner's names and contact information are not available there. Mm -hmm. That is public record, but it's not necessary for us to put it out there. Mm -hmm. Someone can come and inquire here sure. if they need to. Um, however, police and emergency services really need it when they're out on the road. Sure. And so the secure staff site is accessed by their password only, and it will give them the name of the owner and the contact the mailing address mm -hmm. of the owner mm -hmm. which will help them when they're out on on the job yeah. mm -hmm. okay. and that's going to be available to police fire um, ambulance of course EMD yeah and I'll note that uh, the, you know the Board of Health wants to put all this data in mm -hmm. putting data in is the expensive thing in these in these programs especially when it's unique data like uh, a particular piece of property and where the septic is located on it. Yeah. There is this summer coming up another opportunity to get a grant from the community compact program yeah. in the state. There are three different kinds of grants and one of them is an IT grant. Um, a lot of towns use it to get extra equipment but it can also be used for this sort of thing and Lee and I have been coming up with a wish list for <laughs> what we might be able to get. Yeah. The problem, again, though, is a, a single, building a single, you know, Layer. massive input of data is great, but then there's also an operational cost to maintaining it, and yeah. we're still trying to figure out how best that can happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, not, not the hardware so much as the input, new data input. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that would become, I would think, the responsibility of the Board of Health in this particular instance. But Carl gets this data all the time. He has it uh, downloadable to a spreadsheet. Uh -huh. So that will interface nicely with our fellow up at Cartographic. All right. mm -hmm. And he's very willing to dig right into it, too. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is that, is that, how, does, how does it get audited for accuracy? Is that done by? That would have to be done by the Board of Health. Board of Health. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, because he knows the data. Yeah. Okay. So. Any other questions for Lee? Thank you, Lee. Thank, Thank you, you, Russ. Thank if you, you think of much. any, give us a call. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda, other town meeting and budget business. Tom, do you have anything on that? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to draw your attention to those, um, the sheets with the, with the red figures on them. And if you just, uh, I think I, uh, I don't have any more myself. But there's uh, there's a, the Excel spreadsheet with the 
uh, operation budget and the uh, warrant article uh, money items on it. Uh, at the bottom, I have changed the, the assumption to a 5% rise in school costs, 5% uh, for the per um, The COLA is just an estimate. Uh, all those figures are still unknown. Um, obviously, I haven't plugged in the new assessor's figures uh, that we just got either. And there, there's one item for the money articles that's not in there, and that's the audit. Uh, if we put in 12,000 a year, um, that would appear, and then, um, that would just be 12,000 every year and uh, leveling out the budget, uh, but it would raise, it would raise this budget, um, obviously, mm -hmm. as well. But those are the or preliminary numbers that uh, there will be some variance from them. Last year, the school budgets went up 5.78%, so it could be that 5% is a as a low estimate, and I should be looking at what it would be if it were six. Uh, it just so happens that the five percent with the numbers that are on there now comes out under four percent percentage rise. So that's about the best I think that we can hope. Last year's percentage rise was I think 4.78 percent. So I think we're on track to be under that. Um, but obviously, right now, uh, a lot depends on. Uh, what the schools come up with their fit for uh, mm -hmm. with for their figures. So every time I give you one of these things, it gets a little better, but it's not perfect. <laughs> so if you see anything obviously wrong on it, let me know. And uh, uh, th this is eventually what turns into the uh, article two in the warrant and and the uh, and the money articles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. Um, any any other questions finance has for us? So the uh, certified growth we don't find out until when May, June, when uh, the assessors certified growth that we estimate for fiscal year twenty. Do we have when, when would we find out? Just trying to figure out if we go to town meeting. Do we have any oh. idea of what the final assessed rate for? Uh, Real property will be in Conway. I'm, not, I'm just anticipating that might be the topic of discussion at the, at the town meeting. Uh, yes. Well, the the new growth that we're considering um, would be new growth in FY18 mm -hmm. added on because we won't know FY19 new growth mm -hmm. until next fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, our actual, um, we find that out as part of the, uh, as, as part of the report to DOR that we have to do to say what our town budget is and was and all that sort of thing. And that has to do with setting the tax rate. And we don't do that until next fall. So, um, if we had a new growth figure now, it would be for the, the previous year. We won't have the FY19 new growth rate until we're setting the taxes, right. which we don't do. We'll have the budget, that's a big part of setting the taxes, but we don't get the, the, the new growth and we don't certify our free cash or anything like that until August or September of next okay. year, right. of this year. So they set the same so growth with a the rate and then, you, then the state will look at, the department will look at and certify the free cash, is that that's mm -hmm. the step, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, oftentimes at town meeting, we know what the certified free cash is. We know what it is for this year, yes. For the previous fiscal year. We know that already. It's yeah. 400 and some thousand dollars. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it. I'll have that in my budget document in so a new, month and a half. the new growth will be high enough so that the 4% increase won't need an override? No, we won't have an override. Well, it's about 2.5%. Right? The budget increases four, that's more than two and a half. Well, so again, the growth will be allowing that. Um, yes. The levy limit, yeah. Uh, the that, new it, growth, it, it, levy it, limit, it, previous it, year, two and a half plus new growth. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't have to do with, with whether or not we have to have an override. 
It, it has to do with whether we have excess levy capacity. Mm -hmm. And we're not now charging people as much as we could for taxes. So we're not near our, our levy limit, mm -hmm. which is different. That's why taxes can go up more than 2.5% without an override. Because they grow. As they have no, because we're not approaching our levy limit. And our levy limit has been much higher than our operating budget because it got bumped up back in the 90s when the town borrowed for the school. So when the town borrowed for the school, that override pushed the levy limit up. But when it was paid off, the operating budget you know, didn't, didn't make a big jump up there. It just kept rising kind of slowly and steadily. Over the last couple of years, we've finally gotten closer to that levy limit. So it is now a factor in whether or not we're, we'd, we'd have to have an override. Still, um, we can avoid an override because we can have, um, not only if we borrow, we exclude the debt from Proposition 2.5, so we don't need an override for that. We can also include money for capital expenses. So we can, we can appropriate money for capital expenses, we can have a capital exclusion as well as a debt exclusion. So we still wouldn't need an override if we did it that way. Um, that said, at that point you're getting into tighter finances, yes. you know, and, and uh, but I think we'll be able to avoid that for, for this year, probably next year. After that, things will get tighter yeah. if there is no substantial new growth. And yeah. you know we, we're in our, our salad days now because of the Comcast expansion. Before that, we had the repair of the dam mm -hmm. uh, on the river. Mm -hmm. So we had all this, this new growth coming from mm -hmm. those sources. And that helped bump our, our levy limit up. But yeah. we're not going to have any major <coughs> utility investment. Uh, Infusion coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Anytime soon after that. Going into town meeting, Tom, we don't think we're going to know what the uh, Increase from Comcast is the assessment from Comcast. I mean, you think there, there, there will be. Well, we'll figure out. You know that that's that's new growth. Yeah, and we will have some. We had some this year. Yeah. We'll have some next year, yeah. uh, and then that'll be it. So we have to not. You know, we have to. This is one of the reasons I want to roll over as much free cash as we can. Yeah, which is now maybe eighty thousand. Which is great. We rolled over, you know, fifteen thousand mm -hmm. last year to this year. So if we can roll over eighty, even seventy thousand, that's way more than we did, and that'll help cushion the blow um, in further years as well. You anticipate next year is big a boost on your excise? I have no idea about the excise tax. You said that, that was pretty high. Uh, yeah, as the assessors. That was quite a jump, you said. Yeah. It was. And I'll tell you, we always very intentionally underestimate what the excise is. It was more than we had expected anyway. Yeah. Uh, we've usually put in 20000 and it, it, it came out... Uh, right? it, 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 it came out a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, that said, the more we underestimate that, that gives us more free cash down the road because it was revenue we had that we hadn't spent. Mm -hmm. So that turns into free cash the next year. It's a, it's a cheap way of getting free cash, is yeah. underestimating your, your excise. Mm -hmm. Okay. It opens Thanks. to making certain budgets. There's another way to do it. Yeah. Well, well I, I got another car, so the excise tax is going to go up. Yeah, you owe good. You owe it. Okay. <laughs> so Tom, yeah. I'm, I'm with you there. Just make sure it's at least six weeks. At All some right. point, we'll start All getting tests. pilot payments from the solar project. That's right. Yeah. Pilot payments. Let's get a right. Tesla. Yeah. Or a Lamborghini. Ah, that's yeah. I'll let you buy the Tesla. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll yeah. see you next week. Yes. Okay, uh, if there's no more business to come before the board, uh, our next meeting is uh, next Monday, the 28th, here in the town hall at 6 p.m. Uh, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay.